This video was made possible by Battleaxe. Hey, it's Jake, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a halftone effect in After Effects using a single adjustment layer, no third-party tools, and you can basically apply it to anything you want. It's really easy to set up and use, so let's get started. I was inspired by two different tutorials for creating a screen print halftone effect, one by Ben Marriott in After Effects and one by Brady over at Texture Labs in Photoshop. I pulled from both of those tutorials to come up with my own technique that has a few more features and I think is really flexible inside of After Effects. So let's jump right into After Effects. I just have a photo to build this effect on top of and I'm gonna start by making a new adjustment layer by going up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer. I'll rename this Halftones and we're going to start by applying a CC Ball Action effect. This is going to be the foundation of our entire effect. What it allows you to do is create a grid of dots basically. It can do a lot more than that but that's what we're going to use it for. But right now, all of those dots are running into each other, so I'm gonna go to the ball size property and just dial that back to something around 54. That looks good. The balls are just barely touching, and I'm gonna turn the grid spacing down to just say three so we have a finer mesh of these dots. But I don't actually want any of this color information from the photo, so I'm going to add a fill effect right after that and I'm gonna make that black. So all of my dots are black now, and it looks like the background is white, but that's just my transparency grid. I wanna fill in that background with a white solid. So I'm going to add a solid composite, which is gonna do exactly that. It fills any empty pixels with whatever color you set here. So now I have a grid of dots but they're all perfectly horizontal and vertical in this grid. And generally, screen printed halftones are not perfectly aligned like that. They're usually at an angle. And unfortunately, I can't just rotate this grid because that's going to break the effect. And I can't go into CC Ball Action and rotate it using its rotation controls because that also rotates the source with it. Instead, I'm going to have that effect selected and then come down to K-Bar and click on the Transform Sandwich button. This is something that Adam and I came up with at Battleaxe. You can click the card in the top right corner right now to learn about exactly how it works, but I'm just gonna click on it, and it applies two instances of the transform effect on top and bottom of CC Ball Action, the effect I had selected. And all I need to do is go to the rotation of the second effect of transform and change this to any other angle. As I rotate this, you see that my grid is rotating with it. That's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna put this at an angle of 33. If you don't have K-Bar or Transform Sandwich and you still wanna do this, it's no problem. Just add a Transform instance above and below CC Ball Action. Rotate the lower one by whatever rotation you wanna use, 33 in this case, and then go to the top instance and change the rotation to negative 33 so that it's opposite. What's happening here is that it's first rotating the source, then applying CC Ball Action, and then rotating it back. And this, in effect, allows you to rotate any effect that doesn't have rotation controls. Now that I have my grid of dots, I'm noticing that around the outside edge, there's just a little bit of white being left unaffected, but fortunately, there's a really easy fix for this. I'm just going to add a new solid by going up to Layer New Solid. I'll click OK drag it to the bottom, and then just scale it up a little bit. And as I do that, you can see that that fills in those gaps around the edges. I'm just gonna rename this BG Fix and lock that layer so I don't accidentally move it around, and we can move on with the rest of our effects. I'll go back to my adjustment layer. After the fill in solid composite, I need to add a Gaussian blur. Gaussian, Gaussian, whatever you wanna say. Uh, I'm just gonna drag that out and blur this out ever so slightly. I don't wanna go so far that it just turns gray. I wanna just bleed these edges of the black dots into the white areas a little bit, but I don't wanna lose too much of that contrast. Then I'm going to add a CC composite effect right after that, which will take the original unaffected version of whatever's below this adjustment layer and recomposite it back on top. But I wanna composite it using a blend mode. The one that I'm looking for is called hard mix. This is a special blend mode. And there we go, it's already working. It even works with colors, which is fantastic. So if that's the look you're going for, you can pretty much call it a day. That is the halftone effect, but we can take this a little bit further. What's happening with this hard mix effect is that it's taking the values of the original image and basically applying a threshold to this grid of dots. And in the way that it's doing it is making the dots bigger or smaller while blending them together with those original colors. It's a really cool blend mode and it does a great job for this effect. Now let's say that you don't want it to have these colors. We could easily just add a threshold effect 
and that will make everything pure white or pure black, but it also makes it really, really crunchy. So I wanna soften up those dots a little bit. I'll just add another Gaussian blur, and then blur this out ever so slightly, just about that far. And then I'm gonna add a brightness and contrast effect right after that. And I'm gonna check on the Use a Legacy checkbox, increase the contrast, and that's basically sharpening up those areas that we blurred. Now this might be a little bit too much, we're losing a lot of detail here, but these are all settings that you can play with to dial in the look that you want specifically. The properties that you wanna mess with to adjust this grid is basically the ball size under the CC ball action effect. If I increase or decrease that, it's kind of like a contrast or even a threshold slider. You can see that brings in more details in the background there, as well as the Gaussian blur, this first instance. If I zoom in again and turn that up or down, that's basically going to increase or decrease the contrast as well. And then the second instance of Gaussian blur and this brightness and contrast are basically just a cleanup. If you don't need that cleanup, if you like the chunky look, you can leave those off, but you can play around with all of these properties to do basically the same thing, increase or decrease the brightness, increase or decrease the contrast, add or remove detail, it's very flexible. Now if you wanted to add some color into this, you could just add a tint effect right after that and change the black and white to be something maybe a little bit more stylized. So I'll add in a little bit of a darker blue for the black and take the white and make that maybe a bright green color. So you can really have a lot of fun with this and make it look like it was actually a screen print. And if that's the look you're going for, I'm gonna take this even one more step further, go into this textures folder, and I have two paper textures here that I got from texturelabs.org. Everything on that website is completely free to use. Brady has been doing this project for a long time. Definitely go check it out and support him if you haven't seen it yet. But I'm just gonna drag out one of these on top of the entire comp. It's just kind of this thick paper that has a nice texture to it. And I'm gonna set the blend mode of that layer to multiply, and that's just gonna give me some texture on top of everything. I might wanna add, say, a levels effect just to be able to dial in the contrast of that texture a little bit more. Maybe bring up the brights a little bit so it's not quite so intense. And then I'm gonna add the second texture on top of that and set it to screen so that we're getting just those lighter specks in here. Let me zoom into this darker area if I turn that off and back on. Just a really nice paper texture and it gives it a little bit more of an organic quality. But now that I've set this up on a single adjustment layer and a couple of textures, I can literally put anything underneath that adjustment layer and it will generate these half tones on top of it. One thing you should think about is that the reason this is working on a photo so well is because photos are made up of lots of different values and different colors. And in the print world, especially with screen printing, halftones are generally there to add in those details of shading and changes in value using a single pass of color. So if this comp right here was actually a print, we'd be using this tealish green colored paper and printing the darker blue ink on top of it. And if we take a look at this screen print that I have in the background here and zoom in nice and close on this area, you can see that there are actually half tones creating the shading inside of this lettering and also near the top of the print as well. But everything else in the print is pretty much solid blocks of color. And in general, you wouldn't wanna see those half tone dots on top of those textures. So if you're going for authenticity, then you're probably gonna wanna work more in that way. But if you're just doing this as a stylized effect, which you have every right to do inside of After, effects, then you can go wild and play around with this however you'd like. But since we have all of this set up, let's take a look at what happens if we change this out with something else. I'm just gonna turn off the photo and type out some text. So I'll say half tones, and I'll just make it nice and big and show you that we're not really getting any effect on this text. There is a little bit of variance around the edges of that text, but this is what I was talking about. Because this is a solid block of color, with no shading, no texture to it at all, it's just showing up as that solid printed color, which is actually pretty accurate. If you wanted to make this a little bit more stylized, then we could do something like add an outline. And actually, I'm gonna swap these so that the outline is black and the fill is white. I'll make that nice and big. And then I'll add a drop shadow on top of that because a drop shadow is going to have some softness and some differences in the values. Now again, this is, if I solo this, just a semi-transparent solid block of color, but because it's not 100% black, it's getting that halftone screen. 
The more opaque it is, the more filled in those dots will become. The more transparent, the larger those dots will become. I want to make this 100% black and then soften it out because then we're going to get that half tone gradient across the edges. Maybe 100% opacity is a little bit much. I still want to see the outline detail of my text. But now I have this really cool look of a drop shadow made up of half tones. And I can do even more than that. If I duplicate this text, take off that drop shadow, and I'll solo this just so we can see what's going on. I'm going to take off that outline and add a gradient ramp effect and align it with the text so that we have this gradient across the text. Then I'll unsolo that, and you can see that now I've got this halftone shading within my text, but it's making it pretty hard to read. So I'm going to grab that black for the start color and just make it a lighter color. It doesn't really matter what color it is because we're using the tint to stylize this. But now we can play around with these start and end points to come up with whatever kind of look that I want. Again, I can just play around with the brightness of that gradient to get it to show up more or less intense. And now I have this really cool looking text effect. Hey, I want to take a second and tell you that if you weren't aware, I teach courses on Skillshare. I've been doing that for the past eight years and I have over 30 classes teaching lots of different things about motion design and After Effects specifically. And there's a class that I just released that goes right along with this specific tutorial where I teach you different techniques for texturing inside of After Effects. So if you want to learn more about how to apply textures, how to generate textures, as well as animate those textures, then check out the card above, which will take you to Skillshare you can actually get a free trial and check out that course and decide if you think that it's worth it to have access to all the other courses on Skillshare, not just mine, but everything on the platform. I even created a tool with over 50 seamless textures for looping these animated textures very easily and simply being able to customize it really quickly inside of After Effects that I give away in that class. Check it out if you're interested. I really think you'll enjoy it. Thanks for tolerating this little interruption. Let's get back to the halftones. Now I want to show you something that's a little bit more complicated, and I'm actually going to jump into Illustrator, where I have this stock design that I got from Envato Elements, and I'm actually going to transfer this over to After Effects using Overlord. I've gone ahead and broken out all the individual elements into groups and named them. Then I'll just select everything, click on this button right here to push that artwork over into After Effects. It's rebuilt exactly the same way that I had in Illustrator, but as shape layers. And if you're not using Overlord yet, go check it out. It will change your life. But now I have all of this artwork right in After Effects. I'm going to jump back to my halftones and grab those three layers at the top of the layer stack and then paste them on top of here. And just like that, we've got our instant halftone effect. And those layers came in in the wrong order, so I'm just going to rearrange them. But let's say in this one, I don't want to tint the color. I'm just going to go back to that adjustment layer, and I'll turn off the tint. And I'll also turn off the threshold so that we're left with the original colors, or similar to the original colors. If I turn these off and back on, you can see that it is making quite a bit of difference. That's just a side effect of the CC composite effect. But from here, we could adjust the colors a little bit. If I duplicate CC composite and change hard mix to, say, color, and then drag that to the bottom. Now the colors are much closer to what we were before the effects were applied. But it took the vector style and added this gritty quality to it. It applied those half tones to those different levels of shading on the character, and it just gave it a completely different look and feel that's really easy to adjust. Now again, it's completely up to you what you want this effect to look like, but if you don't need a lot of fine details, you could go into CC Ball Action and turn the grid spacing up to say seven or eight and get much larger halftones. We did kind of break the effect though, so let me collapse that up and turn off all the effects up until Solid Composite so we can see what our grid looks like. As you can see, the balls are just running into each other. So I need to just dial that back a little bit. And then I'll turn my Gaussian blur back on. That should probably be a little bit more of a blur so that this bleeds into each other a little more now. Turn my CC composite hard mix style back on. The cleanup Gaussian blur and brightness and contrast. And then the final CC composite. And now we just have a much larger halftone stylizing our entire comp. I think everything got a little bit too bright, so I'm just going to increase the ball size a little bit to bring in more of that detail. But we could also go the opposite direction. Turn the grid spacing way down to, say, 1, and do that same process again. Turn off all of these effects up to the solid composite. Zoom in nice and close and dial back that ball size so that they're not quite running into each other so much. Turn on that Gaussian blur and dial that way back, right about there. CC composite, CC composite 2, and now we have a much tighter grid of halftones. 
So there are just so many variables that you can modify to dial in the exact look that you want. Now here's another really fun example where I've actually animated some stuff. I used radio waves to generate those bubbles in the background, but I think this effect just really lends itself to this shaded, stylized, cartoony, printed looking text. And I just wanted to show you how I set that up. So if I jump into this pre-comp, this is the text and I created it using the CC plastic effect to generate that highlight. I have a couple of different instances of the text to generate these outlines. And within this is the actual text with a gradient applied, but all of those things combined and then a Bezier warp for distortion and some drop shadows that are actually white to blow out that background and make the text easier to read creates a very interesting effect that just has a really cool quality to it. The dots on this particular example are nice and big, which does make smaller details a little bit harder to read, but that was a trade-off that I was okay with for this particular example. This one was a lot of fun. It was inspired by the white stripes. I created this band called the Halftones, but uh, I used a smaller, much finer mesh of dots for this one. I think it still gives a pretty cool look. I did the text probably the hardest way possible using a lot of instances of transform and CC composite. You can go check out the transform effects of After Effects video to see exactly how I pulled that off. The background was done with Venetian blinds, polar coordinates and the warp effect, which by the way, if you've ever heard me talk about an effect that you didn't understand, I have created a video for it here on my YouTube channel. The Effects of After Effects series covers every single effect in After Effects and you can just search for the effect name on my channel and it will show up. So if you're ever confused, just go check out one of those videos. Another great application of this effect is 3D renders. I made this battle axe in Cinema 4D and it just brought it in. This is what it looked like before. And if I turn off some of these effects, uh, it's just on a solid background, but I matted it off so that I just have that axe isolated and I added some effects to bring in more detail. So that's what I wanna show you with this one. If I zoom in nice and close and I turn off all these effects except for set matte, that's just what isolates it from the background. I wanna show you that first I used a Minimax effect as well as a CC composite to add an outline around the ax. So that's what that looks like. It just brings that stroke around the entire alpha channel. And that helped define it from the background a little bit more. And then I added a brightness and contrast effect and it lowered the brightness and lowered the contrast because the higher the contrast is, the more muddied everything is going to get. So if I dial this back even further, it's really going to bring in those details even more. And then to just, again, separate it from the background I added a drop shadow with a nice soft feather and that gave it a little bit more separation from the background texture. And on top of the halftone effect, I also added a posterized time effect to drop it down to 12 frames per second, just so it gave it more of a hand animated feel. And you also notice that the halftones are jittering around. That's with the turbulent displace effect. Again, just to give it a little bit more of an organic touch, I just animated the random seed using an expression, which I believe I just used random 10,000. Yep, and that generates a random number for every frame of the animation. And again, finished it all off with this Texture Labs paper texture. And while this effect generally works best with shading and not solid blocks of color, I even applied it to my logo intro here. And I think it looks pretty nice. It just gives it that cool texture. It's not necessarily being used in an actual way that you would in the real world, but that's okay. You don't always have to be 100% authentic. Sometimes you can just have fun and add some texture. Again, I posterized the time to 12 frames per second. I added in three instances of animated texture this time, just to give that background even more movement and I think it turned out really nice. But that just about does it for this halftone effect. It works on top of videos as well. I grabbed another stock clip from Envato Elements, which was shot on a green screen, so I was able to key out the woman, add a layer style to add that stroke around her, and just apply this effect right on top of everything. Again, it worked just like before. So you really can have a lot of fun with this effect. Thanks for watching. I hope that you learned something in this video. Big thanks to both Ben Marriott and Brady over at Texture Labs for creating tutorials that inspired me to make this one. A huge thank you goes out to my patrons over at Patreon. If you're interested in supporting more tutorials like this one, go check the link in the description. Thank you again for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.